Today we're gonna to be working on an O1M or O1P valve body. They're pretty much the same thing. What I'm gonna do here is gonna to apply to both. Um, this thing is like a little brick of misery for people. They cause all kinds of problems and irregularities and shifting. And I'd say this is the biggest problem with these units. So we're gonna show you what we do with them. Um, check ball locations and stuff like that. You're gonna to have to go with what you have because some of them are a little bit different. I'm only gonna be able to show you what's in this particular valve body. So let's get into it. All right, first we're gonna get this thing taken apart. We have two little Torx head screws. Under here we have a check ball and a spring. We'll mark that. And uh, these springs break too, so sometimes you have to replace those. Very, very fine spring. Okay, so now there's nothing in here that's gonna fall out or get us into trouble. Then we have these two Torx heads, and as you see, they are shorter than the ones that we just took out. Now under here, we have a couple things. We have a check ball here, one here. We got one down in here. And then we have this, which is like a little sleeve. And then there's a larger check ball underneath it. Let's grab hold of this rascal and I can show you. So next we're gonna take all these solenoids out and um, this is your little ID tag that's gonna give you the uh, code that matches the valve body. So that's important if you need to buy a new valve body, having that code information is gonna help you. So now we have a bunch of solenoids. And as you can see, there's, there's two different designs in this transmission. All right, there's these duty cycle solenoids, which are for your pressure control and your lockup, and the rest are your shift solenoids. have two more down here now also here we have a valve and spring Let's see if I could grab that And this is our solenoid regulator valve. This kind of screws in. And um, this one is bad a lot, right? So we're gonna have to rebore it and put an oversized valve. And uh, this thing will give you some crazy problems if it's worn out. It, it could even give you, um, you know, it'll shift first, second, third, then it'll go to neutral. I mean, it's, it's some pretty radical stuff. It'll feel like it's falling out of the car if it's worn. So it's just this little tiny valve, but it's a um, source of a lot of issues. And we take all these out because we change these plastic end plugs as well. You know, oftentimes they make metal replacements and I don't, you know, I don't really see the plastic break, but I, I feel comfortable with the metal stuff, if possible. So 
Now this valve here is a source of issues. It's a little valve and a sleeve. All right, and this is um, a TCC valve. And it wears out in this sleeve and it's gonna give you converter clutch codes like um, P0740, P0741. I don't know if we'll be able to capture this, but these get really loose in here. And uh, you'll see it, they're, they're visibly worn. And right? this is just, it's a throwaway. Anytime you do one of these, you gotta change that. So now we have four more valves in here. I'm going to just pull these out and then I'm going to show you what came out. All right, so maybe this will give you a better look. I have these laid out as they come out. All right, so out of all of these, we're going to mess with these end plugs and we're going to change the sleeve. And also when we change that sleeve, it comes with a new spring. Next, we're on to the other side. All right, so we have several things here that we got to take out and I'll, I'll show you what we end up with again. And also this, this one is different than most of the other ones because it unscrews, right? These, you kind of push down and you give a little turn. Until they pop up. And again, these are plastic, so when possible, when they make metal replacements, we change them. All right, and uh, I want to show you this. This is the pressure regulator valve, and I'm just going to put it in here backwards so you can kind of see. I mean, these things kind of wear to death in here, so we're going to have to rebore that, and we're going to put an uh, oversized valve in. All right, so this is the rest of the stuff that we took out. So now I'm gonna clean this thing up and I'm gonna stone it, you know, to make sure everything's flat and there's no high spots because these are, um, they're junk. I mean, you really need to spend a lot of time on these valve bodies because this really is everything when it comes to making this transmission work. Right, so this is some of what needs to go in here. A little pressure regulator valve. Little Sonex components. And it gives you an end plug with O-rings. So this is a um, bigger diameter, slightly, than the original one. Which that's no advantage in, in and of itself. But we're gonna have to bore this oversized because the the bore wears out so it's akin to um you have cylinder wall wear in your engine you have to bore it oversized and put an oversized piston so that's that's kind of all we're doing there and the same with this the solenoid regulator valve these wear to death and um it's going to require boring the valve body out Next is, again, this is a source of, of many, many complaints. This is a, uh, a TCC boost valve. And it also comes with a spring. And that, that makes your converter clutch application a little bit better. And as you see, there's, the valve is in there. And this is uh, to replace this, which wears not only on the inside, but it wears on the outside. Like this whole thing moves around in the valve body. And it just pisses out all your, your lockup oil. 
And these are just end plugs, right, to replace the plastic ones where we can. And this, they, they give you another um, pressure regulator plug, but we don't need both of them. This one's actually different because we're boring the valve body oversized, so this, this end plug is going to be different from the one that you're not boring it. Now, beyond that, we change all the solenoids. And I'm not saying that they, they go bad all the time. It's just, we're doing bench jobs. We don't have the vehicle here. We don't want to mess around. When we send somebody a valve body or a whole transmissions, it's going to have all new solenoids in it. And um, this ribbon is a source of problems too. All right, this is a, a circuit board. And they kind of get brittle. They get old. You'll have codes for open and shorted solenoids, et cetera, et cetera. So this isn't included with a valve body. This is an extra that I, you know, I always recommend, because once you unplug these things and plug it back out, oftentimes you've disturbed it and you're going to set all kinds of codes. But when we do a trans, it always gets a ribbon and all the solenoids. All right, so we have this set up, and this is a special fixture for doing this job. And it has a little pin that you locate into the valve bore. And you're going to tighten this all down. And it's got like a spherical bushing in here. So now we take the guide pin out and um, we're going to be able to ream it. So I'm going to oil up our reamer, oil up the bore some more. And this is all real precise stuff, so it's very delicate in the fit. And um, there's different ways to do this. Some people use drills or, or whatever, but I like it just a speed handle and I just put a little ball joint on it. And just slowly turn it clockwise. And once you get to the bottom, you're going to feel it and it's going to stop and we're going to know it's done. But this pretty much isn't a do it yourself thing. This is, if you have one of these that's bad, you're better off getting a replacement valve body because this is hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of tools to do this. And reamers, you always want to. Keep turning them in the same direction. If you go backwards with this thing, you're gonna A, ruin the bore, and you're also gonna ruin the reamer. Now we have this set up again to do the pressure regulator. So you wanna tighten this whole spherical bushing down, and you want these to be loose. All right, because that's going to tell you you're line, you lined up properly with this tool. So this tool is going to serve to guide the reamer. You can't very well pilot a reamer off a worn bore. Well, this is the same procedure. And when you think you're done, you're usually not. You gotta keep going. <laughs> okay, when it starts turning free like that, that tells you you're all the way in. All right, now we have all this stuff cleaned up and laid out the way it's supposed to. Our new solenoids, this valve that we bored, the solenoid regulator, the pressure regulator. So now we're gonna go through the process of putting this back together. Oh, if you could see it, but we're putting these in. This tab has to align with this, and then you got to give it a 45. And these valves, as you see, I put a little transmission 
assembly grease on them so the springs don't fall off as I put them in. And this has a little seat that sits in the spring. And now this is one of the problematic ones with this sleeve that I told you wears out. So this comes with a new spring with the Sonex kit and a new sleeve. Sometimes it's a little, little tight in there. All right, now I'm gonna put all the solenoids in, and this is kind of optional. Some kits come with these gaskets for under the solenoid, so I'm not convinced that they really do that much, but it's no harm to put them in. Got to make sure they're down all the way. So what we end up with is four of the tan colored connectors and one of the brown. I'm just gonna make sure these are all moving freely and we don't have valves sticking up or anything like that. Now we're gonna put this end cover on. And what I'm using is a drill on a very, very low clutch setting. And we're just not even tightening these yet. And then I go over them by hand. And now this is the solenoid regulator that we bored out. So let's get the oversized valve here. And then we have to screw this piece in. So we got to push it down against the spring tension. We got to thread it. And I like to give it a pretty good snug because, um, you know, these things can come loose. Now it's all that's left. There's the pressure regulator and one other valve. 
And this I did off camera because we have a little secret for in here that we're not sharing with everybody. This one is another plug that has to be screwed in. And lastly, the pressure regulator. It's spring. And this has an O-ring on it, so we want to put a little lube. So now this is a little trick to it. You have to um, kind of push down and you don't want to tear the O-ring. All right, I tried to mark this so you guys could see it. Now we have two large check balls and two small check balls. So we have a large one there and a seat, a large one here, small one and a small one. And um, your mileage may vary. You might have different check ball locations, but this is what's correct for this particular bow body. Now these are our alignment holes. This one's kind of, um, oblong and this one as you can see is a little bit smaller than the other one so this is going to line up our plate and this one takes the two short screws remember how i showed you before there's longer ones and shorter ones Okay, so the last thing we have to do is we have this flipped over. There's a little tiny spring in here. We have our separator plate. And as you can see, this spring pushes this ball up against it. So we have to hold it with our fingers here and put it down. And that's our finished product. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.